back everyone. I really hope you're all doing well and a very big welcome to all my new subscribers. I noticed that I've gained quite a few over the lockdown period. So welcome to my channel. I really hope you enjoy it. Today I'm going to be talking about some of my favourite houseplant products. I always get asked like what my favourite fertiliser is, what I use to treat bugs on the plants, how I keep the leaves shiny. So I thought I'd compile a little list for you and I'll obviously link all the products down below in the description box. I also have an Amazon shop which I'll link below for you. And here you can pretty much find everything that I buy. I buy a lot of stuff from Amazon and this was the best way of kind of putting all the products together that I use and recommend in one place and you can kind of browse it like a shop. It's starting to feel really autumnal now here in the UK. It's getting a little bit chilly. Soon it will be time to chop back some of my lovely tropical garden and overwinter some of the plants and I'll be making a video on that as well. But I do really love autumn. I love how cosy it feels and I love decorating for autumn, which is something else that I'll be showing you in a video. But for now, let's get on with my favourite products. I have written them down in my notepad as I am extremely forgetful. So probably the number one product that I always get asked about is what fertiliser do I use for my houseplants? And I have been using the same fertiliser for about six years, maybe a bit longer. And it's Baby Bio Liquid Houseplant Food. It's really cheap, it's highly concentrated, so you literally only need a few drops and the instructions are on the back so it just says add five to ten drops to half a litre one pint of water every time you water or mix half a capful in one litre two pints of water and feed every two weeks use when the plants are actively growing so i usually fertilize my house plants every two to three weeks during the summer so i'll usually add about 10 drops of this into my watering can which i believe is about one litre and that would be two pints. So I am actually diluting it more than what it says on the bottle and I'm only giving it to them every kind of two to three weeks, but just do whatever's best for you. I don't want to over fertilize them because that can cause issues. It works for me how I'm feeding them at the moment. So I'll continue with what I'm doing. So that is the first product. The next product that is extremely useful and I might actually get another one for upstairs. Again, I got this off Amazon. It is the Thermo Pro Hygrometer. So this little gadget will actually measure the humidity and the temperature of your home, which is really, really useful, especially if you're growing rare tropical houseplants that need high humidity. It's just really useful to have. If your humidity is looking a bit low, just whack up the old humidifier. If the temperature's too low, well, stick the heating on, that's what I'd do. Depends where you live. If it's too hot, I'd say you're pretty lucky. Again, this was very inexpensive. I think it was around 12 or 13 pounds and I haven't had any problems with it. And also I think, I've, I think I've had it about a year and I've only replaced the batteries once in it. So that's pretty good going. So at the moment, my humidity is measuring 65% and the temperature in here is 25 degrees Celsius. And it's pretty chilly outside. I have actually put the heating back on this week. So because of that, I have actually whacked up the humidity a little bit on my humidifier, just to make sure that the air isn't too dry. Some of the products, I'll just attach them on the screen or I'll attach a bit of footage of me actually using them rather than me having to kind of bring them all down here to the table. But the next on my list, I've got humidifier, which is a must, especially if you live in quite a dry climate. Here in the UK, as I said, we kind of whack on the central heating throughout the winter, which makes your home and your air very dry. So definitely a must if you live in the UK and you collect kind of rare tropical plants that need humidity, or even common house plants would appreciate some humidity. I've got three different humidifiers. So I've got one in here, no I haven't, I've got two in here, although I'm only using one at the moment, and then I've got one upstairs in my office. My newest humidifier is the Elect Homes Cool and Warm Mist. I think the tank is about 5.5 litres, so it's pretty big, you don't have to fill it up that often. 
And what I really love about it is that you can actually fill it from the top. So it's quite low maintenance. You don't have to faff around with taking out the tank and turning it upside down and all sorts. You just literally lift up the lid, pour the water in, which I really love. Elect Homes kindly sent me this humidifier recently. And so far it's my favorite but I will update you in a few months once I've had it for a while and given it a good old test run. Next on my list for must-have plant products is my soil mix. So this is made up of coir compost, perlite, bark and charcoal. All of these products I get on Amazon and I will attach a video of how I kind of mix up my soil. You can completely tailor it to whatever plants you have and so far my plants seem to be loving it. And I've just noticed it's pretty uh, misty in here so if it looks a bit hazy it's from the humidifier. It looks a bit, it looks like the house is on fire or something. Again I'll be adding all these products below for you so they're easy to find. Next on my list is grow lights, which is something I literally couldn't be without, especially during the winter months as it gets a bit dark and gloomy inside the house. Although it is very cosy, but the plants do not get enough light unless they're literally on the windowsill. So upstairs in my office, I've got a large shelving unit from Ikea, which houses lots of my lovely rare plants and I'm using the awesome Spider Farmer grow lights. They fit my shelving unit perfectly, although they do have other sizes available. The LEDs are Samsung, so they're really good quality. And you can actually dim the lights, which I've had to do recently as they were actually like blinding. Although during the winter months, I'll probably turn them up a bit because it's going to be a bit darker and a bit gloomy. So the plants will need a bit more light. But so far my plants have been absolutely loving the lights and some plants that I received a few months back that had no variegation since having them under the grow light for a few months they have literally gone wild and produced like highly variegated leaves so I'm super super impressed and I do have a few kind of cheaper bulb style lights around my home which look nice not quite as superior but they do the job if you just want to put maybe like one plant underneath or something like that but i would highly recommend the spider farmer grow lights i'll link them below for you individually but i've also included them in my amazon shop where you can actually go and have a look at the reviews of the product which i find really useful i love looking at reviews before i buy anything so go and have a look at the reviews and you'll see how good they are. Next on my list, something a bit basic, but something I use all the time in the garden and in the house is Flexi Tie 2.5 millimeter. So in the garden, I use it for staking plants to bamboo poles. And I also use them for my house plants inside. Sometimes if the stems are a bit crazy, I'll kind of tie the stems together or obviously I can tie the plant to bamboo pole or moss pole or whatever, but I found that really, really useful. I forgot to mention when I was talking about fertilizer, for my garden plants, I use liquid seaweed and liquid tomato feed. So I'll also include those below for you. Next on my list is my neem oil mix, which consists of neem oil, horticultural soap, and that's it, just the two things. Obviously you mix them with warm water to create like a nice neem oil mix. The instructions are on the back of the bottles, but this can be used as a preventative measure for bugs. So every couple of months you can kind of spray this onto the leaves of your plants and give them a wipe down with some kitchen roll. And it also gives the leaves a lovely shine. I always get asked, how do you make your leaves so beautiful and shiny all the time? and it's it's literally from the neem oil mix but be aware it can make the plants a bit light sensitive because it's obviously putting a coating of oil on top of the leaves i guess it's like putting sun oil on and then going outside you're probably more likely to catch the sun so just bear that in mind you don't want to give your plants sunburn next on my list is the bonide systemic houseplant treatment this has been an absolute lifesaver for me last summer my houseplants got attacked by thrips i literally lost most of my calatheas some of them are still recovering i had to kind of cut them back to right back to the ground and then they've regrown luckily like my orbifolia has come back and some of my other calatheas but i did lose some of them 
and I lost yeah, I lost quite a few plants to thrips. First I tried the neem oil, but I would say that's a bit better for like spider mites and things like that. Thrips are awful, honestly, that they're, they're like the worst bug ever. I also tried predatory mites, which have brilliant reviews on Amazon. I have linked them into my shop anyway, and I've heard a lot of people have had really good success with them, but I tried them twice and it did get rid of the thrips for a few weeks, but then they came back, so I just didn't have much luck with it. So I ended up going for a systemic treatment, which is basically granules that you um, sprinkle onto the top of the soil, kind of work it into the soil, give your plants a good water, and then the plants basically absorb the treatment, which deters the bugs. And so far it is the only thing that has worked for me. So I now try and use this every kind of, I think you're meant to use it every three months to kind of keep the bugs away. So I need to keep on top of that and it is amazing. The annoying thing is you can't get it here in the UK. So I have to order it from eBay America, which is a bit of a pain and it's quite expensive, but highly recommend it. If you're having a nightmare with thrips, definitely recommend it. Next on my list is something a bit basic, just spray bottles that I got from Amazon. One of them I put my neem oil mix in and then the other one I just put filtered water in and I use that for misting the moss that's kind of sitting on the soil on some of my anthuriums and yeah, just really handy to have. Next on my list I've got sticky fly traps, it's like the little yellow strips that you stick in the soil, these are really really good for fungus gnats and apparently they can work for thrips as well. Again like about a year ago I had a bit of a crazy fungus gnat um, moment. They are attracted to kind of damp soggy soil so if you're a bit of an overwaterer you'll probably end up getting fungus gnats at some point. I'm actually an underwaterer so I'm not quite sure why they were attracted to my plants but yeah i did have them not for long um i basically let the soil dry out for a bit and included some of these sticky traps around in some of the plants and then they were gone and i've never really had them back so very very handy next on my list is my pruners although i do want to get some smaller ones because i think mine are meant for the garden they're quite big and chunky but i really love them and they they're, well, they're brilliant for giving your plants a little prune, or if you need to cut any, if you need to cut any like dead leaves off or anything like that. So I use these for my house plants and my garden plants. And last but not least on my list of must-have plant products is my water filter. So I've had this filter probably about two years, and I use it for myself for my birds and for all my house plants I water all my house plants with filtered room temperature water because some of them can be a little bit fussy with tap water in regards to like chemicals especially calatheas so yeah I'm really happy with my water filter I've also bought this as a gift for my parents and one of my friends because I love it so much and yeah what can I say it's a water filter but yeah it does the job so these are the main kind of plant products that I use in my home, that I use frequently, that I really recommend. And if I can think of anything else, I'll attach them below or into my Amazon shop. If you've got any questions about any of the products, just comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really, really hope you found the video useful. Keep an eye out for some of my cozy autumn content coming up and Obviously things like how to overwinter the garden and caladiums because I get asked quite a lot about that. Take care everyone and I'll see you all soon. Bye!